What's up everybody? This is Prefix Wiz and I'm coming at you with another Unity tutorial. Today in my fake studio, I'll be bringing you some real information about Unity C Sharp coding and how you can save your character's position and rotation. Counting double digit thousands. <laughs> How to save your character's rotation in a C Sharp script. Let's go ahead and open Unity. And for this purpose, we're going to go ahead and download an asset. We're going to download the characters pack. All right, we're just go ahead and import it. Okay, once it's downloaded, the only thing we really want out of here is the third person character, and that's just so I can show you positioning. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and create a 3D object, and we'll create a plane. And we'll go ahead and place that plane at 0, 0, 0. And on this plane, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and bring in a texture of a grid and I'm going to place it on that plane. That way we have, again, a reference to kind of where we are in 3D space. All right. So I'm going to rotate it around so we can see it a little bit better. And then I'm going to create a character. Let's go with third person. All right. And let's just position the cam main camera somewhere back above it so we can see what we're doing. So the next thing we're going to do is create a C sharp script. Let's go ahead and create. C sharp script, let's name it save location. And let's go ahead and double click it and open it up in Mono Develop. Okay, once it's open, let's just go ahead and get rid of this stuff. What we're gonna do first is create six public variables. Three of them will be for the X, Y, Z in position, and the other three will be the X, Y, Z in rotation. So let's create those. Just go ahead and create them all public so you can see them in the inspector as they work. So we know we're going to need an awake function, a start function, and some sort of update function, whether it be fixed update or late update or just update in general. So today we're just going to use update. So let's just go ahead and create our first function. All right, so we're going to do something in the awake function. We're also going to do something in the start function. And we are also going to do some, let's go ahead and do the update. Okay, so in awake we'll be getting the values for the current position and rotation. That's when the game first starts up and the character is awake. It happens before start, so that's why we're going to put that there. So in, uh, in the start function, we'll be setting the values for the current position and rotation. And in the update function, we're going to go ahead and save the values of our current position and rotation every single frame. It's, it works for this purpose, but uh, maybe if you have a large game, you don't want to do it every frame for sure. Uh, maybe you just want to hit a save button and then it works. Uh, we could also do it that way, but you can manipulate this any way you need to. This is just the basics of saving character position and rotation. So we know we want to save the position and rotation. So let's go ahead and set that up in player press. So that saves the, the position of the character. And now we're going to go ahead and do the rotation. So what we're doing is we're accessing the player press and we're setting the actual save keyword of my position X to our current transform.position.x. We're also doing the same thing for y and in our key name for position z, we're saving our transform.position.z. Same thing for our player prefs in rotation. We're going to set our key to get the information transform.eulerangles.x and we're going to do the same thing for y and of course the same thing for z. And now that we're done doing that, let's go ahead and jump back up to the awake function. So the first thing that we want to do as soon as the game goes live is we want to get the values from the position that we were at. So if you were playing the game, you're running around or something is running around or moving around, I should say, and we're tracking that location and we're saving that tracked location. And then let's say the game cuts off, your power goes out, your phone battery dies, whatever the situation is, we want to get that information and apply it. Well, first we just want to get the information and we want to set those keys to those public variables. We want to get that information and put it in our containers. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so as you can see here, in our awake function, we are setting our variables. We're telling our variables, look, I want you to go get the key position, my position X, and store that information, get that number, and put it in here. And you're going to do the same thing for this character's Y position, Z position. You're going to do it for the X rotation and the Y rotation and the Z rotation. You got to do it for everything. Okay, so down here in the start function, we're actually going to set it. So in the awake function, which happens before the start, we're going to grab that information. And then in the start function, we're going to set it. 
All right, so it's pretty simple. We're just going to go ahead and say our transform dot position, our current position right now when we start the game is going to be equal to a new vector three, which we're saying a new spot in, in our 3D space. And that's going to be what we stored in our containers earlier. So obviously it's going to look for a X, Y, and Z value, as you can see here. And all we're going to do is replace those zeros with our variables. All right, so for position, that's all we're going to do. We're going to grab the transform. We're going to say, look, this transforms position is equal to a new spot in 3D space, and it's going to be equal to these numbers. And these are the numbers that we grabbed from our save keys in our awake function. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing for rotation. So when we get the rotation, we have to do it differently than a vector three. A vector three is saying somewhere in 3D space is a position. That's where we want to put something in a spot. But if we want to look in a specific direction, we have to get the Euler angles. Okay, so that's where we're going to use the transform.rotation equals quaternion. All right, and then we're just going to do the same thing we did before because it's going to be looking for some numbers, x, y, and z. And up here in our awake function, we went ahead and grab that information from those save keys and put them in our variables. So we're just going to copy, paste, and that's it. Let's go ahead and save this script. Let's go back into Unity, make sure we don't have any errors. We do not. We are going to go to the character and let's just go ahead and place this on the character. Just drag it on over. You can drag it up here. And you see here in the public that there's six numbers and we know what those six numbers are. Uh, now, if you've followed any of my other tutorials in my uh, Unity Tips and Tricks, I believe I have one that shows you how to organize public variables. All right, so when we hit play, we should be able to move this character around the scene. And you notice it started around 12, in the corner of 12 and 8. And we're going to go all the way over to 1, and then we're going to turn around and look at us. And then we're going to hit stop. And then we're going to hit play again. And what we should see is the transform that it left off on should start up in the same area with the same rotation and it does so thanks again for watching guys i really hope this helps you maybe there's another way to do this maybe there's a better way to do it if there is please go ahead and mark that comment down in the section below so that we know um, i'm really here to help if you like this video please click that like button and don't forget to subscribe